Well, he praised the September 11 attacks, called suicide bombers heroes and blamed women for being raped. Now Australia's leading Muslim leader has gone completely off the rails. The man dubbed the Thick Sheikh by one newspaper has launched an insane attack on our way of life. Sheikh Al has been spreading hatred and bigotry for 20 years in this country and he's been protected by too many people for too long. <laughs> Sheikh Al Halali is the most senior Muslim cleric in Australia. Here he is on Egyptian television this week, talking about Australians. Their values are upside down. They have no democracy, no freedom. They are the worst liars and unjust people. Remember, this is the same guy who recently described Aussie women as meat and blamed them for provoking sexual attacks by wearing skimpy clothing. Now he's telling the world that Australia has no freedom or democracy and that we're liars and unjust people. And that's not all. Here he is claiming Muslims were in Australia before European settlers. Australia is no longer Anglo-Saxon. We've been in Australia longer than them. Islam is deep-rooted in the Australian soil. Islam was here before the English fleet. What he's saying is he's got more right to be here than non-Muslims. Andrew Bolt from Melbourne's Herald Sun newspaper has long been critical of Sheikh Halali. For more than 20 years has said things like this and worse and worse and is still the leading mufti, the leading imam in Australia. What does this say about Muslims in Australia that this man continues after all is done to represent them? The Sheikh's interview was broadcast in Egypt on Monday night and seen around the world the following day on satellite TV. Here he insults our heritage. The English and Anglo-Saxons arrived in Australia as convicts in handcuffs. We paid from our own pockets and went there as free people. If he calls himself an Australian, then he shouldn't be saying what he's saying. He needs to conform himself to our society as to what we believe is right and wrong. I do understand that some people will be offended and I do apologise to anyone who's offended. Kaiser Trad from the Islamic Friendship Association continues to defend the controversial sheikh, claiming yet again that he's being misunderstood. In that interview he's addressing people from a uh, different cultural background and uh, people with different cultural understandings and in that context you start to understand why the language has to be slightly different. The Sheikh has a record going back 20 years, not only of saying vile things like this, but then immediately claiming once he's caught that he's been misquoted. You know he's not. You have two translations. I've seen them. He's not been misquoted. He's been caught out again. The Sheikh is still overseas, but when he spoke exclusively with Ben Fordham late last year, he said his comments comparing women to meat were a misunderstanding, as were the comments he made defending the Lebanese men convicted of Sydney's gang rapes. Can you say very clearly that you are sorry for the people who have been offended? Offended, yes. 100%. 100%. 100%. I can't hear you saying... Misunderstanding. I can't hear you saying sorry. He misunderstanding. I'm very, very sorry for that. But you have to wonder about the sincerity of that apology when less than three months later he's telling the world the rapes didn't even happen. They arranged to meet in a public park at 2 or 3am in the morning and it was agreed on. And he's not suggesting there was no rape. He's saying essentially there was no rape. The sex agreed on. That's just disgusting. This man has been an apologist for rapists and someone who minimises the crime of rape for a long time now and he remains the Mufti of Australia. For someone who obviously doesn't like Australians, doesn't respect our values, doesn't respect the decisions of our courts and certainly doesn't respect our women, you've got to ask yourself the question, why on earth does he still want to live here? And why is he allowed to continue to hold such an important position in the Muslim community? When people like him are allowed to speak for the Muslim community, when people who criticise him are damned as racist and yeah, whatever, then what you will get one day is a very ugly reaction, Cronulla times ten, which no one should want. What do you believe should happen to this bloke? What is the most critical thing now to do is for Muslims themselves to look at Hilali. If they really think he speaks for them and is only a victim, 
then I think the rest of Australia should think, what is the place of Islam in Australia? Can we afford it? Ben McCormack reporting and Sheikh Al Halali is now planning to share his views at another conference in the Middle East. So much for a man who's meant to be building bridges in our community, he seems to keep blowing them up.